Evening and welcome to Blatt's Talk. It's a special show today. I think it's the third special I've done. I finally got the camera going. I have no clue if it will last. So let's just get going as soon as possible and uh, use it for as long as we can. Usually it's about 10 minutes. So let's find out if it's going to be like that. Welcome to Blatt's Talk. This is what we do every week, usually every week at 6 p.m is talk about BLAPS, Better Living and Positive Propaganda System, it's my philosophy, uh, talking about real knowledge, that's talk. So we're talking about everyday stuff, normally in a normal show, we talk about over here, what happens in the UK, over there, what happens outside the UK, uh, community and celebrity, uh, what happens in that world, and again, at last point, we talk about what sparks me off, what gets my nerves, what grinds my gears, Gets me going, what's part, you know. Uh, but today is a special show. So um, we're going to talk about one specific subject. And I'm going to talk about life, the universe, and everything. Everything, meaning if you don't understand what's happening in the world, I'm going to try and help you solve it or help it make it clearer. If you want to know more about the Black's philosophy, today's the day. If you want to know why things are happening in the current universe or in your special universe, in your special life, I will try to make it clearer. It's my point of view. It's an subjective one, obviously, but it comes from a land of uh, personal experience and um, from counseling and helping and mentoring people's lives so it's not so much um penny 10 cents philosophy or 10 cents neuroscience or or pseudoscience it's um it, it, it works it's what it works what can i say okay a lot of people agree with it understand more about what's happening in their lives because of it so i'm going to leave the forum open Litchin, I'm going to talk about a certain other. I've got a structure. Don't worry. Hang with me. I've got a structure. Uh, I'm not going to take too long today um, because, I, like I say again, the camera, I have no clue. And we've done nothing at five minutes, maybe oh, two minutes has gone. So I'm going to help. I'm going to say what I need to say about the universe. And if any time you want to join and say, ah, maybe you can help me with. You cut. You go in the in the inbox or in my inbox, or if you want to do it privately, or if you want to talk in the the um, the comment section. That's uh, up to you. So we got who we got now? We got Kancho Jim, Chen, fellow martial artist, and Asgali. Yes, nice one, Bridgen, and uh, hello, Julie Bay, uh, Tyrone, Bra. And ah, Adisa, see you back in the homeboy, homeboy, still strong, poetry man. Okay, <laughs> greetings. <laughs> shall I say shalom? Shall I say, or shall I say, beyond with you? Uh... <laughs> I don't know what else. Hello, greetings, welcome, come on in. Yeah, so uh, let's get started. Black's philosophy is based on on Taoism. If you don't know what Taoism, you've probably heard the word Taoism, which is the symbol for which is yin yin yang symbol, you know, a black and white, white and black and black and white. It represents a dichotomy of the universe and opposites having a bit of their self in their opposite. And the dichotomy is that if you know black, then you know about white. If you know about up, you know about down. If you know about left, you know about right. Chalk cheese, blah blah blah. You know, you get it. So this represents uh, the duality of the universe, and that sometimes when you say you're being someone can look at the, what your action and tell you you're being cruel to that person, and then the person it's happening to says no, it's love. So you can see both sides from, and you're looking at one situation. So. Obviously, things are open to interpretation, subjective thoughts on what is happening. Uh, everyone's 
everyone's entitled to their thoughts, feelings, whatever. Now, what's actually happening can be uh, is not an objective thing. So, if you want to have some clarity, then you want to have the answer that is the closest to the actual situation that is occurring. So, what people may think of you arguing with your partner every day may say you need to leave that person they're damaging you blah 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 and then another person will say no but if you don't argue there'll be no communication this is a bad form of communication but it is still communication so therefore you are clarifying things even though you're shouting at the top of your voice and you look angry and you feel violent towards each other you might feel violent towards one not saying you aren't then but you are getting things clarified if you didn't talk to each other no communication stagnation occurs nothing happens nothing gets sorted out so yes argue but now find a different way to argue a more effective way to argue discuss have discourse communication all right hello trish you're never late you're you're always on time don't worry about what anyone else thinks in this forum you're on time trish you got it just at the right time tristan you got that from me right yeah <laughs> when i get here that's the time i'm supposed to be here but my dad did say if you're on time you're late so just saying i'm just saying trish i'm just saying but yeah i'm, I'm so, me i'm glad you're here i don't care what time you got here i'm just glad Bye. welcome we're talking about life, the universe, and everything, Trish. So if you feel you want to know something to clarify your viewpoints or things you hoid around the world, then go for it. Now, let's get started because, I, like I say, this camera is a bit bothersome these days. I've missed out about three, four shows because of this damn camera. Uh, right, so last year, what do you need to know about how we got here, how, what, where we are, and what we should be doing? Do you think about your children's futures? How have you prepared yourself for success? Who do you depend on for your happiness? Now, I've put out four questions because that's the first part of four parts today. Uh, the first question was, what do you need to know about how we got here? Now, it doesn't really matter. As in Black's philosophy, I'm going to always pertain it to Black's philosophy, which is, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. That's our motto. If you didn't know what our motto was, because you haven't been on this show before, that's our motto. Now, if you heard what I said, it wasn't in terms of endearment, I'm, endearment, I'm showing clarity to my endearment for humanity. It's more about understanding we all come from the planet Earth. Some people may look like or carry on like they're from another planet. MIB in the house. No, <laughs> we all come from a planet. No matter your religion, no matter what your thoughts, no matter what, no one as we know it has come from a different planet and is now residing here, um, trying to fit in as a human being. So that means um, we are all the same family. Now, if you want to say that, People born around the area Africa is in were first to have knowledge, to have awareness. Um, they were born in a very sun, sunny equatorial place, and therefore the equator is the main place. So it's very hot, so therefore they were black. But melanin in the skin is what helps you with the sun. And you can take, um, you can deal with the sun's heat and rays better with melanin in your skin so people who could not after being uh going to different parts of the world where the temperature is different where the vegetation is different where the climate is different weather is different from climate if you understand that and where the regions are of a more uh slightly lower temperate nature then your skin will eventually change to deal with that and so therefore as we migrated looking for food looking for better coverage for for the better condition to live in 
you would go around the world, the humanity would go around the world, go to the coast and then go around the world, like to India, where India is now, uh, you know, because the earth was all a clump and then it split apart and that's why Australia drifted off and that's why America separated from the Europe and, you know, that's why we've got our map as we see it, Peterson to you, I think it's called. But anyway, if you're going around um, the, the coastal lines, you go around and you go towards China and then you go up up the top of China, they go across Russia and back towards Europe, uh, you eventually change your skin color, okay? Just like there are different types of dogs, there are different types of ape, and uh, we are still apes as far as the, uh, you want to talk about evolution, we are evolution of an ape, so we're still apes. Um, if you want to talk about that, if you want to talk about religion, fine. You could say God made us the way we are right now, and we have just changed because we're put in different ways, and we, whatever. I don't really care. But the fact you cannot argue with is the fact that all humans came from the earth, from the mud of the earth. The earth, earth is what underneath your foot, earth. So. There's no one arguing with that. So now all you've got to do now is say that's Mother Nature then. We came from Mother, which is the Earth. The nurturer of humanity is the Mother. This Earth we're living on is trying to kill everything on it. There's not much of the Earth humanity can be on and still live. There's very cold places. There's very hot places. There are very dry places. There are very wet places. There are very snowy places. There are very leafy places. There's places where they have animals that are very, very poisonous. Australia. And they're all trying to kill you. So it's just a matter of the different temperature can kill you. The, the different creatures can kill you um uh, the the sea can kill you we can't breathe in too much underwater uh going up too high in the mountainous regions can kill you and it goes on and on blaps people it's nigel long time no see blaps oh you can see that that's uh, that's, that's a black symbol don't worry about it it's for me and nigel don't worry about it no you can't be in blacks you're blacks people you can't be in black but you can be a black. Everyone in black. It's a long story. Anyway, I'll get back to that. I'll get back to the philosophy of blacks in a second. But when it pertains to humanity and Mother Nature and the world, understand this. We all come from the earth. And then you've got the sun, which is what keeps everything alive, as in heat. Uh, and that could be considered the dad. You see? God's son. God's son. Who's, whose son belong to? Not me, not you, not any human. Must be some god, so it's god's son, sun god, Ra, Amun Ra from Egyptian times. No, okay, doesn't matter. You got the wind god, Yah, Way, Yah, Way, no, Yahweh, the wind god, Yahweh is the wind god, Horus, the son of God, Jesus is Horus, Horus is an Egyptian part where Je they got the story for Jesus, doesn't matter. Anyway, doesn't matter what is religion, like I said before, I kind of get distracted. But what I'm saying to you is, Mother, Mother Nature, humans, keep them alive, son. Moon, a guide, auntie, uncle. Stars, friends. Uh, quasars, moons, planets, family, friends, cousins, nieces, nephews. Time, grandfather, universe, great grandfather. Okay? So it's a family. It's a family affair. So getting back to it, the whole premise of Blacks, Blacks philosophy, is I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Who do you normally say that kind of stuff to? It's normally your family. Who you do anything for, you do anything to protect. And if you're going to show love, you show it by protecting something you love. So think about your phone. You protect your phone. You put a cover on it. 
you get insurance for it. You get um, you make sure that you clean it, make sure it doesn't get dirty, it doesn't get wet. You protect it from all kinds of different environments that it could uh, damage it. You make sure that no one gets into it because they can damage it, change the software. You make sure that um, it's always around you so you can always draw your attention to it and keep it comfortable. You always have a cable to charge it with because those damn things wear down. And you have, always keep it updated. Protection, protection, protection. Because you love your phone. Name me a time where you have left your house knowing you haven't got your phone and then you forget you haven't got your phone. You, you remember you haven't got your phone. And you say, ah, I'll just go to work, you'll be fine. <laughs> I'll go to school, it'll be fine. No. You turn around and you go back and get your phone. Okay, there was a time where we did, we used to live without phones. We used to have a telephone box on the corner. And everyone knew the number for the telephone box. And if it rang, someone would answer it and say, yeah, hold on, I'll go get him. He's at number 23. And you go knock on the door, there's a phone call for you. Then people got phones in their house. It is amazing. <laughs> the original phone number for Blaps was 0582, not 01582. 0582666. Nigel, do you remember that? Yeah. I made up cards for Blaps. This is 1985. <laughs> this is how long Blaps has been going on. 1985, I made these cards. 0582666. It's very funny. To me, it's very hilarious. So, think about protection. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Meaning, I don't care what you do. You sell your children, I don't care what you do. You could go and kick puppies all day as far as I'm concerned. I'm still going to love you. You can go out and kill people all day. I'm still going to love you. There's nothing you can do about it. I'm going to love you. If you could say that to a stranger, then you'll understand where Black's philosophy is coming from. Black's philosophy helps you to understand that as a stranger, I considered you part of my human family. Not my real blood family, but still, my family, because humans started off maybe as black in Africa, maybe whatever, but then melanin, different melanin uh, amounts in the skin, your skin changes color, but you're still the human race. There is no one, there's no race, as in racial, it's just one race, there's not races, they're not different races, there's just one race. You want to talk about different types of human cultures. Different cultures, yeah. So if you're anti-culturalist, you're probably considered a racist, technically, <laughs> if you want to see it that way. But racism isn't that. Racism is about controlling um, a set of people, uh, controlling uh, the world, so a set of people can get further than another set of people, than anyone else. So if the white people, the white supremacists, are seeing that they're, their, their particular colour is going to be bred out of humanity and will all be grey people. <laughs> Black, white, grey. No? Okay, cool. So it, yeah, mixed heritage then. <laughs> all right, so, and so they choose to try and control every aspect, political, judicial, economical, financial, all the kind of aspects to make sure that their race that they consider a race separate from the rest they made that up especially when they started slavery they made up the black race they're not a man anymore they're not a woman anymore they're a black woman and a black man now they're an indian woman and an indian no it's not right it's not culture it's zero race. it's red man red woman yellow man yet see all this color stuff is the Bushy that needs to stop. It needs to stop real quick. We need to understand that we're all one family. Race only carries on when a certain people who think they're a different race because they made up the colours into races uh, think that they can they're going to be bred out of humanity so they try and stop it all and control the world around it so to to, to keep their Aryan race pure. Anyway, we don't care about that. Life, the universe, and everything. Everything around in the universe is within us. 
as humans. If you understand scientifically that singularities happen when suns collapse, they turn into black holes, they get collapse upon themselves, and they crush matter until the explosion happens and singularity occurs, causing another star to occur and another system to occur. So this whole universe started from one of those singularities blowing up and it was called the Big Bang. It's 13.57 billion years ago and they could sell it to the nanosecond. What they could tell you to the nanosecond after the Big Bang, what happened, but they can't tell you what happened to make the Big Bang occur. So the Big Bang occurs and then wow the expansion is what the big bang explains the expansion of the universe which is still happening apparently and so it moves and moves and moves and then lots of debris because of the explosion gets clumped into mass because of gravity gets clumped together and the smallest shape you can make is a circle a sphere a ball you see and that's why planets occur other debris falls into different solar solar, uh, solar uh, it falls into solar systems around our sun we are connected to our sun because we're still moving in this huge explosion we're caught in the gravity of the sun the sun's caught in the gravity of the galaxy the gravity's caught in the galaxy of the universe and so the epicenter we're all swirling around this epicenter in our different methods, different spheres of uh, the cosmos. Right. So this is a very short view here. And then the Earth got clumped together because of Jupiter and because of the sun. They were competing over who's bigger and the sun won. And now we're all swelling around the sun. And it takes us 365 days to get around the sun. And here we are. 13.57 billion years and the the earth took 4.57 4.3 was it 3 point 3.5 or 3.7 billion years or something like that to get where it is now so it wasn't just like this immediately it took a long time to cool down and it still is cooling because we've got an inner molten part which keeps the tectonic plates moving that's how you get earthquakes and volcanoes and different temperate weather and the moon keeps us from speaking about and you know and it affects our, our, our <laughs> there's people hello Lorraine hello hello Lorraine hi Adrian my stalker uh hello Hassan and hello David Bradley Chen got martial artists in tonight cool so now uh comment on life the universe and anything if you got a problem with the universe let me know if you want to explain something, I'm not explaining something properly. Get in there. Help me out. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Uh, if you've got some question you want to ask me, if you think I can help you out, I'll try. If you can explain something I'm trying to explain faster and clearer than me, do it. Because I ain't got all night to get to the point. You're trying to figure out why I know all this because I asked a question a long time ago to my dad, where where do humans come from? And he was like, Why do you want to know that? Go and look in Encyclopedia Britannica. Now he would tell me he would tell me a lot of things. And we had a lot of books. So I had a lot of I did a lot of reading. I still do a lot of reading. I could turn my camera around now and there's hundreds of books in the corner. And in that room as well, there's hundreds of books in there. And there's hundreds of books in my garages. I think I have, at the last count, 7,000 books. Is that 7,000 books? Uh, I have my own personal library. I've had it a long time. But that's why. Because one day my dad said, why is your little brother crying? And I said, because Raymond, elder brother, told him that, Father Christmas doesn't exist and neither does Jesus because it's around Christmas. And he said to me, do you believe Father Christmas is this? I go, Dad, I'm grown. I'm nine now. I'm grown. I'm grown. Dad, I'm big man. I'm nine. Come on now. He said, what about Jesus? I go, I don't know. I suppose God exists, but I don't, I don't know anything about Jesus. He goes, prove Jesus exists. Go to the books, prove Jesus exists. 
and from that day to today I have not been able to do so so therefore science <laughs> my mum devout Baptist I think Baptist yes and my dad was Christian until he came to England where he got all, all amount of bushy happened to him and then he turned atheist over a while mum where does the tree come from god made it god made it that way and if you don't like it it's your problem it's god's god made the tree that way okay cool dad where did the tree come from well it's plants and chlorophyll and light and photosynthesis plants grow that's where you go oh, okay cool why is the sky blue mum god made it blue well you need to ask me a stupid question for god made it blue if you like the color blue maybe blue okay mum cheers dad Where's the sky? Why is the sky blue? Oh, it's because the sun refract the light gets refracted by the atmosphere, and blue is the weakest color, so it gets scattered among between the different stratosphere, the nanosphere, the ionosphere, and blah blah blah. So that's why you see blue, and then yellow is like the strongest. So that's why you see blue, yellow pierces through all the uh, yellow. See what I'm saying? Uh, thanks, Dad. You see what I mean? So that's my life growing up, Lorraine yes i've told you the story three times because you asked me <laughs> not a lot of people have heard that story though lorraine you've got to understand there's not just you here you might think you're the only person that's important yes there you go so there you go that's why we're talking about it. anyway life university universe and everything do you know do you think about your children's futures now, I ask people this a lot because if they, I say to them, uh, try to better yourself, uh, try to find out how, where you're weak and where your strength, strengths are, uh, heighten your um, weaknesses to lay our strengths. And so you'll find out more about yourself, become more confident, self esteem will go up, um, and then help other children because they are the future, obviously. Well, the children are the future, you know, that kind of and so therefore uh, they say well i haven't got any children i goes well do it for their children and then that's not their children do it for someone else's child because they grow up and if you've got children and you make the whole community strong through what you're doing you know get their character stuff up and make them stronger in themselves so they become more confident less fear less doubt therefore less bullying will occur and then they grow up in a community where there's not much bullying going on and they're all loving each other like their family when the children grow up they'll change because they'll become the judges the police the the counselors the doctors the see they'll have a different attitude change the attitude change the behavior don't change the attitude you'll have have no change of behavior history will reoccur therefore always think about your children and their future what are you doing about your child's future you should always be thinking about making your child the strongest child they can be because therefore when they grow up they're going to affect their community negatively or positively now i don't particularly believe in heaven and hell because i have no religious wranglings about me so i don't need it so therefore i don't think about it but i have made up uh a way of dealing with this heaven and hell thing uh, i see it uh, in a different way that when i die what i leave behind for my children or your children or their children uh, is if it's all good and positive and i've made structures that people can learn from and i've made uh, provisos that people can go off and can continue their learning and better themselves and become stronger in the community because of what I've left behind I've left heaven and if I go around being a terror just thinking for myself being selfish enjoying my life yeah it's the last one I got I'm gonna go to after I die anyway so I don't give a damn what I do here blah blah, blah and I, I'm only living for God and blah blah or I'm just having a good time because I'm too selfish to think about anyone else but myself. After I've gone, there's nothing. It's just a waste of time. All I did was eat, defecate, and die while I was alive. 
So now, if you've thought about nothing else but yourself, you've left nothing behind, so therefore you left hell behind. Do you see? For the other people. So I say, I'm a worthy person. I'm valuable. I've made myself more valuable by learning as much as I can, by being much more stronger so I can help people that are not so strong as me become stronger. Therefore, I become valuable in my community. My community will be more efficient after I'm gone. You see, oh, you would have loved him, Lorraine. Yeah, if you wish you met my dad, my, my, you would have loved him. Uh, my dad is the kind of person that if you're sitting waiting for the bus to come, you'll be best friends by the time the bus arrives. You'll be thinking about what, when you're going to meet up again, when you're going to see him again. He's that kind of guy. Now, yeah, he used to terrify me. and But with every terror he gave me, he would give me 50 things to laugh about. So it's um, it was uh, I miss him deeply, as you know. He died 2007, and I think about him every single day. As everyone should be thought about. Now, if you leave hell behind, everyone's going to be talking about you like your dad was a plow, your mark, your dad was yeah, and your dad was e, and he oh, and all he did was ah. Not my dad. People come up to me and still, I remember your dad. He was so cool. He used to take us to football. He used to do this. He used to do that. He used to do that. Yeah, that's exactly. He was like me, Lorraine. Are you like that? I did not know this, Lorraine. Yes, he's like you. <laughs> so another question I've asked is, how have you prepared yourself for success? Personally, have you prepared yourself for success? Now, I'm going to tag it with the next question as well. So who do you depend on for your happiness? Because people think being um, successful is happiness, but it's not people. Happiness is the key to success. Sex is not the key to happiness. If you enjoy what you're doing, then you will be successful. So find out what makes you happy and do that. That will bring success. That's what you have to do. Don't try and be getting a job that brings in loads of money. Brings in loads of money might make you successful financially, but it won't make you happy. So you have to find things that make you happy. Find a way to make money from it if you really want to do it for the rest of your life. And then you will do that job for nothing, but the cherry on top will be that you get paid for it. So therefore, that will lead towards happiness because you're doing exactly what you want to do and it's for, yes, a selfish reason. You're doing it for yourself. But yes, that's you're the only person responsible for your happiness. There is no one else. Don't look at your wife. Don't look at your husband. Don't look at your boyfriend, your dog, your squirrel across the road, your grandparents. No one is responsible for your happiness but you. No one is responsible for your happiness. But you, you decide what makes you happy. You decide if you've found happiness. You decide if you want to stay happy. No one else can do that for you. No one else can say, oh, he made me vex. She made me angry. No, you decided to get vexed. You decided to get angry. You decided to get upset. You gave that person energy. You gave that person, you could ignore them. You could decide to laugh. You could decide to forget what they said completely. What What? what did you say? I, I'm not interested. I haven't got enough energy for you. And go about your business. You could just give them just eh and go about your business. But no, you decide that you're making me angry. You're making me vexed. You've offended me. What? You decided to get offended. You didn't have to get offended. You decided to get offended. Check for bruising and shut the fuck up. Yeah, I said it. Say it again. Don't, if you're offended, check for bruising. The fuck up. Okay. <laughs> 
success is not the key to happiness happiness is the key to success if you enjoy what you are doing then you will be successful it's a mantra written by a Taoist and then a Buddhist stole it and put it on a scroll <laughs> okay so uh, that is I've got it on a scroll on my wall right there <laughs> it's from Taoism you know Taoism Yang uh, Lao Tzu China 500 years for Jesus Confucianism no nah. Taoism T-A-O-ism <laughs> yeah okay Brian what are you so shocked about I don't understand that please is your mind blown okay do not depend on anyone for happiness okay so now we're going to move on in this convo by going to the next part of this show we're running low on time here i didn't want to go too far okay what is the point of it all are we supposed to be all rich are we all supposed to be successful are we all meant to be happy are we meant to know what to do and the answer to that is that we are not all meant to be happy we're not all meant to be rich when you look at people like p diddy dr dre <laughs> we talk about oh um bill gates you look at people uh that have achieved massive success at what you're doing you say i can do that he's a human just like i am look at all them people that you see as successful billionaires and queens and stuff like that. no you can't be them stop fooling yourself if everyone could be them everyone would be a multi-billionaire so stop thinking you could be like these people just find out what you're great at and continue to do that yeah about 500 years well, more than 500 years before jesus actually brian is that what you're shocked about your language my language what the swearing english what do you mean brian brian clarify yeah it's way before jesus um confucius first coined the phrase um if so um do unto others as you would have done unto you okay he first coined the phrase and buddha said something like that after him and then jesus 500 years later said turn the other cheek which is pretty much the same thing if you've offended someone sorry sorry and turn the other cheek okay if you offend them to make them want to slap you turn the other cheek because obviously you are not being humanly bad enough. Uh, wealthy, good. Yeah, I'm probably the richest person you know, Lorraine. If you consider, if you consider yourself wealthy, I have more than enough for everything I need. Good. Are we talking mentally, spiritually, and physically? Then you are wealthy, my dear. It's, it's a true story. You are wealthy indeed. Uh, I consider myself very happy, so therefore very rich. And... I mark my success by how many people I've made happy. So if I've made you stronger, if I've made you more clarified about things, if I've helped you in any way, that's my way of saying I'm successful. Okay, to myself, this is for me. So therefore, it makes me happy that I make other people successful and strong. Okay, because it fulfills my need to make sure I leave heaven behind for my family out there. So if I know I may put someone happy, I'm closer to the I'm closer to the point. Now if I can leave something behind that continues that, you know what I mean, that um, that philosophy, then other people will take on a philosophy and use it to make other people stronger. <laughs> No, I'm not saying Jesus was real. I'm saying that the BC used to mean before Christ. Now it means before critical event, BCE. Okay? But because people were like, no, nah, I don't believe that Jesus. So they made up critical event. 
now it's the turn of the first century so it's 1 AD uh, Anno Domini okay so it's after the death of Jesus now it's after critical event all now uh, it's not that I, I even have to believe in Jesus I don't have to care if there was a person that existed I just have to listen to what Jesus said all right or was written down about Jesus or was said about Jesus I don't even have to say oh was he actually crucified I don't give a damn if he was it doesn't prove he's the son of God it doesn't move, mean that he's divine it doesn't mean anything it just means that you're reporting a story to me that is very interesting to hear but it doesn't mean that it's correct but I can listen to what's written about him and if it was correct if it was real I know that he liked slaves and didn't mind them because in his scriptures that was written about him he tells you how to deal with your slaves so I don't really need to know about Christ I know what about about him plenty okay he's not the kind of the man was the sword I am the sword leave your wife leave your husband forget your children if you think you can get into the into the heavenly realm without coming through me you can forget your family you know what I mean you need to love me more than your family and you know what I mean a load of rubbish a load of rubbish the first time you find out that you don't like people stealing from you is when someone steals from you you know theft is bad when someone steals from you someone takes something that is yours hey give me that back that's mine I don't care it's mine now that's terrible I don't care I'm a bad man I didn't know that okay so therefore you find out theft is bad <laughs> you see and when you punch someone because you don't like them they go ow that hurt man I don't care I like hurting people then okay I didn't know that be on your way you see and then you say no thou shall not hit thou shall not steal oh look killing bad rape bad wait a minute rape is not in the Ten Commandments think about it molestation of children not in the Ten Commandments think about it I don't even want to get into a religious thing but you know I get distracted I mean hello Leah how are you doing yeah, I haven't seen you for a while uh, <laughs> okay so let's move on uh, should should I care about my own community? The questions I'm asking now, the statements I'm making is, what have you done to make your community safer this year? What have you done to make your community more valuable? What have you done that will remain after you have gone for the betterment of your community? What will people say about you after you die to the people that love you? So there we go thinking about the community now and what you can leave for it after uh, you know junior life what have you tried to manifest to help the community that is left after you've gone what have you done to make people happier what have you done to make the community more valuable in your life during this day this week this year what have you done can you name me something do does everyone else know about it okay even if you bet at someone's life for 20 seconds this year can you remember it what was it all right can you make sure that 20 seconds is spread over 7 billion people for the next 50 years yeah didn't think so. so this is what I'm saying to you it's all right you going around being a millionaire and giving away your money give away your money give away your money what have you done that stays after you've gone that people can memorialize you memorialize about you okay Victor died 100 years ago but his CDMA Academy is still here teaching children how to be strong in life and how to raise your self-esteem and confidence so you overcome your fear and doubt so you can achieve anything you achieve you want to achieve in life and be happy that was a hundred years ago he died okay we're still thinking about what we're doing while we're alive 
but we don't think about what happens after we die. It's too scary. And what I'm saying to you is, as an atheist, or even not even as an atheist, as a warrior, a martial arts person, I was a warrior, I meditate upon death every day. Death is not a stranger to me. I understand what's going to happen after I die. I don't know what happens if I go into a new realm of existence. I don't give a damn. Right now, because no one has ever come back, I don't give a damn. Right now, because no one has ever told me I've come back and this is what I saw, I don't give a damn. It's no point me thinking about what happens after death because no one has ever come back and said it's X, Y, and Z. No one has. No one could prove God exists. Why? If they had proved it, you would not hear anything else in life. I'm telling you now, it's quarter to seven, just gone quarter to seven. If someone proved it right now, you would not hear anything else in the news for the next 50 years. God exists. If someone proved it today at quarter to seven, it will be noted down in history for the next millennia. Okay? And that person who discovered it or made a, found out the evidence, would Nobel Peace Prize will be the least of his awards. The Nobel Peace Prize will be the least of his awards. He'd get an Oscar. He'd get a certificate for swimming because he found that God exists. He found the evidence and proved God exists. So there is none. There is no evidence. I've got a website that says... Um, Atheists are evil. We just don't believe in your God. And the motto on that one, or the tagline is, uh, what was it? Uh, if you uh, celebrate uh, or celebrate your, your finding evidence, for, if you find evidence for God, um, rejoice in the fact that you are the first to do so. When you find evidence for God, Rejoice in the fact that you are the first to do so. Okay? Which means there is no evidence for God. If you have evidence, it will be known around the world. There's nothing you can know about after death that I don't know. Meaning there's nothing you can know in the world, ever, that I don't know. That I cannot know. There's nothing I know that you cannot know. Okay? Now you might be able to say, do... Uh, neuroscience or you might be able to do like quadratic equations in your head that's not something I cannot know just because I don't know how to do it now it's not something I can't find out and know okay the only thing we cannot know is what happens after we die so everyone that comes after you and tells you they know what happens after die if you could tell them liar you're lying to me you're lying you're you're a damn flagrant liar Pope, your imam, um, priest, anyone religious, anyone who thinks they've seen Christ, anyone, I don't care what you say, okay, or what level you are in religion. You tell me you know what happens after death, you, you're a liar. So therefore, I don't have to trust you, okay, because you're just trying to get something over on me. And I don't care who you are. I've got, I've talked to pastors, some bishops and everything. I say, you're just a damn liar. You have no clue what happens. And you have no clue about your God either. The God you chat about, you have no clue what he's about or she's about or it's about. You have no clue because you cannot understand. You can't comprehend a God. Anyway, this is about community right now. The question I'm asking uh, I get distracted. You gotta stop me, people. I get distracted. You start talking about religion. I get I go woo. I go crazy. So yeah, do something in for your community. Make sure you do something. So what I've got going at the moment is uh save a neighbor, save one neighbor, which is knock uh your neighbor's door that you have that you don't really talk to. You you see him across the oh no, that's my neighbor, yeah, he lives at number forty two, whatever. Okay, go over one day and knock the door and just say, are you okay? You're happy? Uh, can I help you with anything? 
Uh, do you want to talk about anything? I know that you, uh, there was a death in your family last week. Is there anything I can, can I help? Can I make a cup of tea? Do you want to come over to my place? Do you want to chill? Just chill. Just be neighborly. When people ask you, how you doing? And you say, yeah, fine, cool. All right. I always say I'm awesome. But I am. <laughs> and I, have, I, I tell people, as soon as I wake up and I breathe in, I say it's going to be a really good day. And then I breathe out, and I know it's going to be a good day, okay? Because I'm still alive. So therefore, this day is going to be awesome. It's the best day. This is the best day because it's another one. <laughs> so okay, so I'm ready to die, okay? I'm a warrior. I meditate upon death. I see death as just that's the end. I'm a living organism now. I'm not living. What do you think about 1915? What do you feel about 1915? Anyone? Anyone? How do you feel about that? You don't feel anything about 1915. How can you possibly be, be scared of 1915? You weren't even existing there. You weren't even an itch in your... <clears throat> so therefore, how do you feel about 2090? Are any of you going to be alive then? How about 2150? How do you feel about the year 2150, where you will be dust and no one will remember you unless you've done something marvelous like Bruce Lee or Nelson Mandela or whatever, whoever you're interested in, who will leave a legacy behind after them that will be always remembered. We remember people from thousands of years ago because they were amazing when they were alive. Okay? You will not be remembered. You will not be loved forever unless you do something fantabulous while you exist okay just eating defecating and dying will not get you on that register so as a person who is a warrior we meditate upon death knowing that we think about what happens after we die what happens in the community after we die what happens to our children what happens to our family and friends what happens to people on the street what happens to the community what happens to the, the country what happens to the world what happens to the universe when i die Therefore, the only way I can affect things after I die is by leaving something behind after I die, okay? That way I live forever. And I also know that this life is it. This is it. So I need to enjoy every damn minute of it. And that's what I do. I'll make sure I have as much fun as possible while making my community awesome by being part, by being awesome and by teaching others to understand how to be awesome so this is what i do what have you done what have you done to make my child's life better what have you done to make my child's child better what have you done lately tell me about it i like to hear it okay so this is what i'm doing i think if everyone had the same attitude wouldn't that be something that would be awesome wouldn't it i think i change my name what do you think Change to awesome, awesome Evelyn. Instead of Victor Evelyn, awesome Evelyn. Yeah, I had that joke when I was about 1980, and it, it didn't work then. So uh, yeah, yeah, I was in one 1980s, but 1990. Yeah, that's about 1990 when hip hop was coming in. All right, so yes, what sparks me off? People who waste their lives. All right, so this is what I've got to talk about with what sparks me off. Da, 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 da. It should have a song. Okay. Why, if you cannot prove the existence of something, are you praying to it? Why are you praying to something you cannot prove exists? Okay, I'm just going to leave that one. Just let it. Okay. Why, if you know you have to get off your backside, if you know you have to do something, you have to get off your backside to get anything done. So you give thanks to an unprovable God for what you have achieved. I don't get it. So like, okay, this is what really gets on my nerves when I see it happen. This guy has been practicing 20 hours a day playing football since he was like three years old and he finally gets into a massive football team at 17 and he's awesome he scores the highest goal blah 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 
And then when he wins the World Cup and he puts up the trophy above his head. Thank God. First, I want to thank God. This is all down to God. This is well, who's God? Thor? Which, which God are you talking about? Which God helped you with your problem? No, it was the immense amount of hours you put into making yourself as skillful as possible and your parents backing you all the way. But isn't that for Lorraine? Is that, is that asking me, but isn't that faith? <laughs> no, faith is just the belief in something without needing proof. Yeah, I believe it. I believe my feet are made out of carrots. Or better still, my trousers are made out of carrots. I believe that. All right, I have faith that the bus. Okay. All right, I'm gonna, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it all down into one sentence. Lorraine, this for you. Okay. I'm standing at a bus stop. It says bus stop on there, and I see buses arrive and leave after they pick up people from this bus stop. So I believe that buses pick up people and take them on the journey to where they say they're going on this bus stop, bus timetable. I look at the bus timetable, and because I've seen buses arriving, I look at the times they arrive on the timetable, and there's, they're, uh, they're adhering to the times on the bus timetable. So I have faith that the next bus will arrive on time. When it arrives on time, I now know that this bus timetable is pretty accurate. But will it take me on my journey? I get on the bus that I chose and I have faith in arriving. And now I know that I'm in a bus. I am my backside is on the bus. And now I know and have sincere belief that it will take me to where I need to go. Does that make that clearer now? But only knowledge will come when all the facts are there when the truth is found, then you will not have faith anymore. You will have knowledge. You won't have belief anymore. You'll have knowledge. I don't care what you believe. I don't care what you have faith in. What do you know? All I care about. Anything you want to bring up. I have faith that, that no. What do you know? What do you know? <laughs> Can I prove my trousers are made out of carrots? No. But I can say anything I want. After you say the word if, you can say anything you want. Try it. Go ahead. If I had five pounds, I could probably get to the other side of the universe by Wednesday next week. If I had a fiver. Try it yourself. I believe that if I had a fiver, I could get to the other side of the universe by next week. Wednesday. I have faith that if I had a fiver, I could get onto a plane and get to the other side of the universe by Wednesday next week. You can say anything you want after you say it in words. What do you know? What do you know? So, uh, last few things about um, what sparks me off because I only got a minute. What can you do with your life today to make yourself required? You see what I did there? What can you do today to make your life required by others? I need you, Vic, because I need you, Victor, because I need you, Victor, because you're the only one that can. You get me? What have you done to make yourself so valuable that you are required? Okay? The people just say, we don't need Victor. He's a waste of time. We don't need him. He's a waste of time. Victor's a waste of time because, you see, it's different. If you're required, if you're needed, what have you done to make that happen? That's all I'm asking. People that spark me or people that waste their lives, don't do that. Okay. And last thing, you're not here to eat, defecate and die, as I've said over and over again today. Uh, so stop existing and start persisting. Stop existing, getting through the day, humdrum, I got paid, I paid for all the bills. I made everyone comfortable under the roof. We'll do it again next month. No. Persist. Get happy. No one can make you happy but you. It's down to you. 
Okay. Get up your ass and do it. People, I know you were asking on behalf of religious people, right? I was just saying, it's just they, they get me diverted sometimes when I talk about them because there's too many of them. And too many people listen to people who sound like them instead of listening to the truth or trying to find the truth. It's a search for the truth. And these people have settled on bushy, bovine defecation. Okay, that's what I've got to say about that. Uh, it's been a stone groove. Yo, people are awesome. All y'all. Yeah, you too. Yes, you too. And um, everybody be cool. You be cool. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about that. You have been blasted. Peace.